say, humor, joy, you know, <laughs> those things are usually my jam. And I'm like, man, I haven't really shown a lot of that side this week. I mean, a little bit, but uh, you know, it's just something that I really value. I value laughter. I value dance. And, uh, and, and honestly, the thought of you being here all week, day four, only the strong survive. Only the ones who are like, hey, like this has been an intense week and you are still here. Who has found this week intense? Give me a little yes, if that's you in, in the chat. Be like, oh my goodness, like I had no idea what was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, this is not for the faint of heart. And, and, and can I just say that this is why um, a lot of the things that we focus on in our world aren't working because this is the hard stuff. This is the, this is the grit. But I'll tell you, there is so much joy when we lean in and when we decide like, no, I am going to write a new story. I am going to do something different. Yes, it is life changing. That's what it is. And, and, and you know, it's funny, I had, I've had some parents, not this, not this round, but in the past, you know, when I would do presentations, say at schools, and I would talk about my book, and I would talk about, you know, how did I bring my son out of, you know, his suicidal, um, you know, our crisis five years ago, and I would list everything you're learning this week, everything, I would share it in a seminar form, and afterwards, you know, I would have people come up to me and say, but, you know, you didn't really tell me how, you know, how to, how to do this. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> and they're like, no, no, no. Like, like you didn't give us any real tools. Like, should I take my kid off gluten? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Do they look like Buddha after they eat bread? I don't know. Look at that. Like, like, or, or what kind of medication should I put my kids on? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not a psychiatrist. Here's the thing. One of the things that we need to realize with our kids and our journeys with through anxiety, depression, any kind of mental health issue, or just parenting in general, is that your family is your feedback. And what we're teaching you this week is the deep rooted stuff that no, that no one teaches. No one teaches this stuff in parenting books because it's, it's not popular, it's not sexy, and it doesn't sell. Um, it, 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 I've tried to sell this and it doesn't. It's, it's not the easy way. This is the narrow road, my friends. And you know what, you need, you need to like give yourself a huge pat on the back for being on the narrow road, taking the road less traveled, because this is, this is the real grit. Um, we've learned some amazing things this week. You know, Shelly, our counselor on day one, you know, she taught us how to, you know, come in through the back door. Look at what's underneath our kids' behavior. Behavior is communication. Your behavior is always telling a story. If you're an avoider, that tells a story. If you are a fighter, that tells a story. If your kid is, has an attitude or if they're depressed or they're anxious or they don't want to go to school or, you know, they're, they're not eating their food, like there's, these tell a story. And in our society, what we do is we focus on the behavior. How can I get my kid to eat their food? How can I get my kid to go to school? How can I get my kid to behave the way I want them to? And how many of you know that, yeah, you want to do that, you go right ahead and there are methods out there and you will get results, especially if you have a child like me, a compliant child, a child who aims to please. Yes, you will have a new kid by Friday. But if you have a kid <laughs> who's oppositional, who, who has a mind to think, um, who's a dreamer, who, who might be struggling in the depths of anxiety, it's not going to work. And we bang our heads against the wall and we wonder, oh my goodness, what is wrong with my child? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with the school system? And when we, when we try to manage behavior, we end up trying to figure out who's to blame. Who's to blame here? I, I remember going through that with, with, with our crisis. You know, I was looking for someone to blame because I wanted my son's behavior fixed. I wanted his behavior to change. I didn't want him anxious anymore. I didn't want to go to the grocery store and have the fruit section be a parkour course. I wanted compliance. I wanted behavior modification. That's what I wanted. And I wanted him to change for him, but I also wanted him to change for me. I was tired of going out and being embarrassed. I was tired of, of, of having to call into work saying, I'm sorry, I can't be there today because we have a crisis going on at home. 
How many of you can relate to that? How many of you can relate to that? Who's like, yeah, like I did sometimes like the things that our kids go through, they're, they're hard things. And what we're teaching you this week is definitely going to, to increase your ability to be able to parent through really, really hard things. Yeah, I love that, Marika. Society's defined opposition as wrong. But these are the dreamers. These are the entrepreneurs. These are the culture shifters. I'm raising a culture shifter. I say that to myself every morning. I am raising somebody who is not meant to be the norm, who's not meant to just be like everybody else, who calls out the BS that, that is out there. A lot of the things he says, I'm like, you're so right. How do you parent that, right? So this is why we're teaching you these things. So day one, we taught you how, what is underneath the behavior. And, and being able to really take a step back and look at what's under behavior is powerful. I wanna share with you a really quick story. When we were in crisis, I, I remember just feeling like it was, this was desperate. I was never, ever going to see change. This was our life for the rest of our lives. And I remember drinking myself to sleep every night. And you know, that's a bit of a hard thing to admit. Not a lot of people like to talk about that, but I will be brave so that others can be brave too. And, and I didn't drink because I thought, man, I just wanna wake up and, and, and be an alcoholic today. That sounds fun. No, I, I woke up and I thought, I need to empty myself of this pain. I need a release. I need something that's gonna help me. And so I remember, you know, like, we, we, uh, we're, we're European. And where's, where's my friend Nina? I am, I am uh, half German and um, uh, we use alcohol for, <laughs> for, oh dear, dear Jesus. Hello. Can I just do this for a second? We use uh, Jägermeister to cure our sore throats in our house. Bless the Lord. Hello, everyone. Cheers. This is coffee. I promise. So we, we didn't have the Jager at that time because in Germany, Jager is over the counter cough medicine. <laughs> and no, but Nina, hello, hello. Um, it, it, it's not abused there. I just want to put that out there. And we were not abusing it either. But let me tell you, we had this whiskey this one time, this fireball whiskey. And I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just drink a whole load of that. And I did. And it knocked me out. And I'm like, this is genius. Like, who's been hiding this for me my whole life? And the next night, it knocked me out again. I mean, I'm not at the club. I'm not doing things that are wrong. My family is asleep. I'm justifying this thing like crazy. And I remember calling up a friend about six months later when I thought, hmm, might be creating a little bit of a bad habit here. And I called up a friend and, and, and she said, Connie, you cannot be doing this. You are a role model. I can't believe you're doing this. You need to stop right away. I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm going to call you up next week. And if you're not out of this lifestyle, you know, we're going to take some severe measures. Well, let me tell you, was she right? Yes, she was right. But did, <laughs> I got off the phone with her and I had two drinks because I felt so much shame because I didn't want to be drinking. I did not want to be drinking. Drinking was the behavior, but there was something underneath it called despair. So let's just uh, fast forward six months later, I get courage to call up another friend because I really don't want this to be my habit. I don't want this to be my life. And many people stuck in behaviors, in mental, mental prisons, they don't want to be there. They don't want to be anxious. They don't want to be depressed. They don't want to feel like the outsider. They don't want it. But what, when we just look at the behavior, it sinks them further into it because they don't see any hope of getting out because they don't know how to change their outside behavior. We have to go for the inside. I called up another friend and she said this. She said, Connie, you have forgotten who you are. You've forgotten that you're a warrior. You've forgotten that you're courageous. I'm getting down there in the dirt with you. I'm grabbing you by the hand and I am not letting go until you come out of this and you remember who you are. Guess who hasn't drank herself to sleep since? That's the power of not looking at the behavior. That's the power of calling someone and watching them and coming alongside and digging to what's underneath the behavior. And that's what we talked about on day one. I am brave. You, you all shared what you need to be brave with. And then day two, we talked about um, I show up when it's hard and Sally walked us through emotional regulation. Being emotionally regulated is the key to life. 
And so she talked about the triggers and you were all so brave sharing your triggers. It was beautiful. And then yesterday, I love without walls, Amanda, she, <laughs> she blew my mind um, with, with this whole idea of self love. How can we love our kids? when we don't even love ourselves? How can we call the identity and the future and the purpose out in our kids when we don't even have it for ourselves? And that's why I have to say how proud I was, again, scrolling through, like as you were putting down who you are, I literally, I'm like, there's my couch right there, there's my morning spot, and I am literally jumping out of my seat, hands raised, going, yes, 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 I was so pumped because as you spoke that boldly over yourself, and you're going to have to keep doing that. This is not a, oh, I'll just do this because she told me to. No. And, and by the way, I love the fact that no, one's, no one in this group does that. That's great. But I love that you took the opportunity. You're going to have to keep doing that. You're going to have to keep reminding yourself of who you are. And you think, man, what does this have to do with parenting? If you haven't clued into that yet, it, I, I, I hope that, that you'll see that this has everything of what it has to do with parenting because you knowing who you are is, determined, is going to determine whether you can pass that on to your kids. And so secure parents create secure kids. Now, do, is there a messy middle? Absolutely. Do I have a child downstairs right now struggling? Absolutely, I do. Do I know who I am? Yes, I do. But I keep standing, and that allows me to keep persevering and keep being brave. And so for you, I loved that. And I loved that the fact that you could say what you needed. This is what I need. Powerful people know how to communicate what they need. And they don't do it in a way where they let things build and build and build and build until they explode on their family because no one ever helps me in this house. <laughs> Can I just say that I'm not a very powerful person sometimes because that happens to me all the time. And then I remember, wait a minute, I need, to, I need to ask for what I need. I need to be able to say, guys, in order for me to be the best mother I can be to you, I have to go for my daily walk. And, and I just need that from you. What family? What family is going to look at you and go, no, 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 you're not, no, we're not going to let you do that. If you do have a family like that, then we need to talk about boundaries, but that's not for today. Today, we are heading on to the next uh, piece of our mantra. I forgive when it hurts. And I'm so excited because we have our next coach. Um, as you can tell, how many of you have noticed that our coaches are all very different? All of us wear different hats. All of us have different personalities, ways of presenting. Some of you are like, whoa, Connie, it's too much in the morning. I don't know. Like, like, because I know BC, you guys are on 9 a.m. It's like, you know, where's your morning coffee? Like, whoa, Connie's just a little too much. And, and, and then somebody else will come in. It's like, oh, I can handle Amanda. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> you know, we're all very, very different. And that's, and that's on purpose. And we all have different walks and different journeys. And today, Kristen, um, she is uh, our, our, another one of our coaches. She's actually our coach's coach. She coaches our coaches on how to coach, if I can say. <laughs> did, did that come out right? She coaches our coaches on how to coach. She is the best coach I know because um, she is able, she has this beautiful gift of being able to sit with people in the dirt she sits with you she gets comfy we have like a little like a little mud bath together but then she's so sneaky because as she's sitting there with you in your mess she calls you up and i don't know how she does it and she calls you to action and she doesn't do it by telling you what to do she does it by you making these revelations for yourself guys that's a good coach that's a coach's job Coaches are not supposed to tell you what to do. They guide you for you to tell you what to do. She is a, uh, I don't know how she does it. Really, I really don't. But she is here in my house because her internet wasn't working. And so I'm just so happy that this works. I promise we're socially distanced. <laughs> yes, you know what, Ryan? Um, Ryan, this isn't Ryan. This is Ashley, right? Ashley, that was Ashley. I know. We are a power team and the unity among our team is real, but we fight for it because sometimes, you know, in traditional teams, people could butt heads when they're different.
but we create a whole different culture of celebrating one another's strengths. We lean into what's hard. So what we teach you how to parent, we, we do ourselves and we do for each other. So Kristen is in the house, literally. So I'm gonna move over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, internet planning fail. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of our kids have ADHD, mine included, and what that usually means is that one of the parents of these children also have ADHD. In my case, my children have two parents with ADHD, <laughs> and I didn't think that my internet wouldn't work this morning at my new house, and so it didn't. So here I am at Connie's house, it's so funny. And I get to talk about how to forgive when it hurts. And so I want to start on the massage table. Have you ever had a massage? And it hurts, but it feels good. And I was on this massage table and the therapist, who's also my cousin's wife, was in this spot and it hurt. And I'm like, oh, that hurts. Like it wasn't a good hurt, it was like a bad hurt. And she said, Kristen, have you forgiven yourself? And I was shocked. What do you mean? But as she said those words, tears started coming out of my eyes and I'm leaning face down and the snot coming out of my nose. And I thought about it. What, forgiven myself for what? How did that happen? Where did that pain come from? And as I thought back, this, this pain in my back went back to a time I put my son, my infant son, in his crib. And I leaned over the top, right? I didn't put the gate down and I leaned over and I put him down and I felt my back go out. And you know what? I held over myself that I was stupid, that I was lazy. How could I even just do that and let that happen to me? But, oh, that was interesting, right? I didn't forgive myself for just not putting the gate down. And that res resonated, that kept in my body, right? There's the book, The Body Keeps the Score. My body was keeping that score. And so when we forgive when it hurts, what that means to me is forgiving myself, forgiving ourselves, because that's what hurts. I've been reading the comments. I haven't been able to, to get in there as much as I would like. I've been moving this week and lots of stuff. But what I read over and over and over again is all of this mom guilt. And I want to suggest that when we feel guilt, that's because we're not letting ourselves off the hook. We're holding ourselves to a standard that we can't achieve, yet we still expect it. And when we feel guilty, we're not forgiving ourselves for, for doing our best, right? I had a coach, right? Coaches need coaches. I had a coach and he said, Kristen, did you do your best? I'm like, yeah, but he's like, no, if you did your best, then that's your best. And so as a parent, we need to look back and say, that's my best. And it, it wasn't what I wanted, it wasn't the outcome, it didn't play out the way I expected, but it was still my best and there was nothing else I could have done, really. Because if you think about it, at that moment, if there was something else you could have done, you would have done it, right? Does that make sense? If there was something else you could have done, you would have. If you had had the actual energy, if you had had the actual tools, if you had had the actual support, you would have done something different. And that's why we're here together to support each other in learning new skills and doing something different as we grow together. So let me, I, I shared, I think in my intro, if you look back to the very first video, I talked about a time when my daughter was nine and I went in there and I said, it's time to clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. And they didn't do it to my standard. If you ask my daughter today, she'll say, I cleaned up. And then 
I went in later that day and I was mad. I was like storming mad. And I went in with a broom and I swept everything up very madly. And I put it in a bag and I threw it out. If you can't clean up, you don't get to keep your stuff. And my daughter, who's 16 now, will comment on this. This was a traumatic event for her. And, and it's so funny because it just came up in my Facebook memories this week. So I just did this however many years ago. And, and I was a teller. As Connie said earlier in her intro for me, I, I ask a lot of questions now. I try to be curious because let me tell you, my history is not to be curious. My history is I know the answer and I'm going to tell you because when I was young, knowing all the answers helped keep me safe. <laughs> but now the questions are more helpful. But here's the thing. So I can look back at that event, I can see how it hurt my daughter, how she feels that in her body today, and I can hold that over my head. Or I can say, I did my best. And what is gonna be more effective in helping me build a relationship with my daughter? What's gonna be more effective to help me change and grow and learn from my behavior? Holding it over my head or letting myself off the hook? My experience is that it's letting myself off the hook. It's saying I did my best. It's saying there's grace for me. And you know what, there's grace for you. And it's in, it's in letting go. And, and let, me, let me tell you, it doesn't happen in a second, right? Just like we have to talk to our kids over and over and over and over and over, we need to talk to ourselves over and over and over again to remind us who we are, just like Connie says. All of our I am statements on that wall, folks, holy cow, right? Inspiring. We remind ourselves who we are. And then we take the steps to make it evident in our life. Just gonna pause for a second. Cause right now in my body, my heart's racing, I'm shaking, but yet there's something else I wanna say and I don't know exactly what it is. So when Connie talks about sitting in the dirt, to me, this is what the dirt is. Like, let's just pause for a second. What's going on? Really? Right, let's slow down, let's breathe. So many of us talked about breathing is what we need. We do, right? We need to breathe. Do you know that you're enough? That what you do is enough? Do you believe that? That all the mistakes you've made are okay? Do you believe that we can repair? Forgiveness is hard. Like when we think about someone who's wronged us, it's hard and it hurts. And so how how do we work with that? Like I was, I was thinking about, do you ever feel guilty about something and you go apologize to the person that you think you did something wrong and they totally forgot about it because <laughs> it wasn't important to them. They didn't even consider it, but we hold it over ourselves. So this is, let's come back to that, right? How do we let ourselves off the hook? And I think this is the hardest journey. It's really funny as I look at this and I'm like, I'm not really looking at the comments. Maybe I should. <laughs> um, but I love interaction, right? So I want to call Connie in here. Like, Connie, let's have a conversation. <laughs> well, I have an idea because this is what she does. You know, when Kristen pauses, like stuff's going on. Like you're very um, aware. <laughs> Kristen, you've done this before with this soluble paper. Yeah. Thank goodness, because I haven't. <laughs> you know what I thought would be really cool? 
as Kristen mm -hmm. was talking, you know, you were feeling something. I know you were mm -hmm. because I was over there holding space for you and I felt it. And I'm wondering what are some of the things like, and, and this is going to be interactive. So get ready. Okay. Everybody get ready. If you're, if you're not at your computer, or if you can't type, get somewhere where you can type because we're going to write down words or things that I need to forgive myself for fill in the blank. So anyone go for it in the chat. I need to forgive myself for fill in the blank. And could you type that in the chat? And as you type it in the chat, I'm going to write it on this sheet of paper. I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Oh. It's going to be fun. Who's going to be brave? Who's going first? Yelling. Kristen, thank oh. you. Okay. I've written it down. Not, no boundaries. No boundaries. Letting people devalue me. Anger. Listen, you guys, I was so rage and I would have an anger hangover. That's what I think about. I would be so angry. And then for days, I would turtle sleeping a lot um, because I was so ashamed of my anger. Mm -hmm. And yet that prevented me, that shame prevented me from building that bridge, from going back in, being a bad example, doing the things I said I wouldn't, feeling resentment, screaming, needing help. Ooh, isn't that powerful what we need, what we need help with? That's tough not knowing what I didn't know, resentment, not having the answers, lacking kindness, right? And, and this all flows together, like watching Amanda yesterday and jealousy, that's a good one. Um, the only reason we can't give this to other people is we don't give it to ourselves, not following my gut, passing on anxiety, unrealistic expectations, lack of self-control. Powerful, you guys. Envy of others who have it all together. Who? Okay, okay, you guys. I drop a lot of F-bombs, so be ready, okay? <laughs> who the fuck has it all in control? Nobody. Nobody, okay? It looks like it, but they don't. That's true. Emotional legacies, Ooh. right? Yeah. Priorities, not finding balance, not spending enough time. Wow. Powerful, you guys. Woo! Priorities. Okay. Um, my writing is horrible because I'm trying to keep up, but I've got like, <laughs> it looks like, it looks like I've tagged a, uh, a, a train. It looks like I'm trying to do graffiti. Um, so now what do we do with this, Kristen? We need water, water, a little bowl of water. Okay, you hold that. Okay. You lead this. Right. So I want to come back to this emotional hangover because I think for me, this is, I felt it, right? Right, exactly. Rochelle just said we can type a lot more, right? There's so much that we hold on to that we don't let go. And sometimes like, I know I get fearful of letting it go because if I let go of this guilt and this shame, like what does that mean about me? How can I be okay? It's not okay that I yell at my kids. It's not okay that I spend time on my phone instead of connecting with them. It's not okay. Except holding on to that guilt and shame doesn't make it any better. Releasing it allows me to have that freedom in my heart and my soul, in my gut, to go forward, right? And to not turtle, to not have that shame, that hangover. And then I'd have this hangover for a few days and then I'd get mad again. And then, so it's just this cycle. So let's let go of that cycle. And we're gonna do this in one way. So all of these things that we're so ready to let go, right? Watch this. Then, okay, so can you see that? They're just dissolving. They're gone. The only thing that keeps them going is us <laughs> and our grasp on them. We can't let it go because what does that mean about us? It just means we're in prison. Mm -hmm. So let it go, cry it out, <laughs> yell it out, hit your pillow, right? It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be, have that hurt and pain. It's okay to get it out physically, right? That's why movement is so important. But talk to ourselves through it. Remind ourselves who we are. We're powerful, we're strong. We can do hard things, including let go of guilt and shame, mm. right? Like I could have a whole story about how I messed up 
this whole day, right? But I don't have to. I made a mistake. Everyone does. These are just mistakes. They're not fatal. We're all still here and we can all still repair. We could all still rebuild, reconnect. It's never over. It's never too late. You're not too old. Not even me. Okay. Wow. So good. So good. Keep looking at this for a minute and just, you know, honestly, remember that, um, that there is always forgiveness for you when, when you can't even forgive yourself. I, what I love about this, Kristen, is as, as, it's, as it's dissolving, it's sinking to the bottom and clarity yeah. is coming. How powerful is that? You know, when you, let it, when you let these things go and you release them somewhere, the clarity comes. And a lot of times, um, I don't thank you, <laughs> we don't know, we don't, we don't have the clarity to parent because our minds are cluttered with all of that shame. And so I hope that this morning, what you've done is you've just released that. I know I, I need some of that paper. That paper is called soluble paper. I bought it on Amazon. It's <laughs> well, and, and <laughs> we are doing a, we're doing an in-person retreat this weekend. It's in Calgary, but if you're, if you're in Calgary and you're like, you know what I need, I need, I need a dose of something, you know, we're doing a retreat as of tomorrow night and all day Saturday. And if you want to come, I mean, you are more than, more than welcome. And we're actually doing that exercise at our retreat because it's powerful. It's so powerful, you know, uh, to think about all the things that we just need to continually release. Because when we know how to be forgiven, we can forgive. And how many of you know that our kids hurt us and our spouses hurt us and, 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 and our partners hurt us and people hurt us? And and we don't realize that we need to garden our, our soul really well. Above all else, guard your heart because out of your heart is the wellspring of life. And if you have a hard time liking your child, um, because sometimes they, they are hard to like, it's, it's sometimes it's because there's roots in there that just need to be pulled out. And they're pulled out gently. You notice how gentle Kristen is? I love that about her. And as soon as she goes quiet, I'm like, yo, it's about to happen, you know, like, but it's gentle, you know, you don't want me counseling you because I am a force, and I but, but, you know, you get, you get Kristen in there and she just walks you through and you feel restored at the end. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It's not for your kids. It's for you. And, and, and we sometimes are actually more easy to forgive others than we can forgive ourselves. And so that was really, really powerful. Yes, Jeff, soluble paper on, on Amazon. <laughs> it, it is powerful. And, and it is, it is um, it's just a beautiful reminder that, yes, have we made mistakes as parents? Absolutely, for sure. Um, <laughs> I could count uh, more. I could write a book on my epic parenting fails. But you know what's so beautiful about our kids is that they are able to rise through our mistakes. The resilience that we want in our kids is, is actually in the repair. It's how we repair afterwards. It's not in the mistake. Uh, if I could bring my son up here, man, he could tell you how many mistakes I've made but it's in the repair. And what repair means is it doesn't mean apologizing if we're not wrong, because sometimes we're not wrong. We've done nothing wrong, but there's been a rupture. There's been an explosion. There's been something that's gone on that's, mm, and now our relationship is in trouble. Not, we, it's, it's not even about the fact that they're acting away or we're acting away. No, we do not want a wedge between us and our kids. We want to have that relationship. And so repairing is actually what creates a resilient kid and a resilient parent. And so that might look like waiting till everyone's calm. Like I said, remember when I, when I said I, I was going to bring my son closer in his rage? No, no, no. Don't, don't try to you know, hold a, a raging lion. We let everyone calm down. And when everyone's calm, that's when the parent initiates repair. 
not the child. Every time a child has to initiate repair, shame is there, saying, I need to grovel at my mother or my father's feet in order to be accepted. And many of us are carrying that kind of shame on our lives because we were the ones who had to prove our worth to our parents. Um, I read something, someone had written that. Um, all of the things that you're, um, that, that you, who you are, your parents don't necessarily like. Like that's where these things come from when we are the ones who have to go and say, mom, I'm so sorry. And she's standing there with her arms crossed going, well, I don't know. Like, how, what does that do to a child? And so we're the ones who go and we repair and how that could look is very something simple like saying, son, that was really hard, wasn't it? Could we talk about this? Because I care more about you than I do about being right. What do you mean, mom? That's crazy. What? I care more about you than I do about being right, but we need to talk about this. Could we talk? That's repair. Saying sorry when we need to say sorry. That's repair. And, and even if they're in the wrong, for us to initiate repair shows, I, I want you to picture, some of you, some of you have the same faith as I do, and, and I want you to picture that son that leaves home and takes all of the money and is rude and is horrible to his father, and he leaves home and he squanders it all, and he, and he does all kinds of horrible things that would disgrace his family name, and he decides one day in the mess, in, in a pig pen, in the dirt, he thinks, wait a minute, I need to go home. And what does his father do? When, when this kid comes home, the father's not standing there going, so you wasted all the money, huh? So you, so you decided to disgrace my name, huh? No, what does he do? He sees him even at the end of the driveway, at the end of the road, and he doesn't stand there and think about all the horrible things I'm gonna say to this kid. This kid is so dead when he gets home. No, what does he do? He runs to him. He runs to him and he puts his arm around him and he actually gives him a new, a new coat, something beautiful, something purple that speaks of royalty. And he says, son, I am not only going to forgive you, but I'm going to remind you of who you are. I have never left you. I will always love you. Now that's what I'm talking about. That is the ultimate repair story I have ever heard in my life. And is it hard to do? Well, yes, but aren't we on that narrow road? Aren't we on the hard way? But we learn to love. I think if there's any reason why we're here on earth and any reason why we have children, it's to learn how to love. It's to learn how to be loved. It's to learn how to be known by somebody else. And the reason why our world is in chaos is because we have resorted parenting and work and life to the top three skills to get somebody else to do what you want them to do. Friends, that's called manipulation. And when it's done on you, it feels disgusting. It feels horrible. You know when somebody's tried to make you behave a certain way, some of you are in recovery from that. <laughs> Why would we ever, ever parent that way? Fear and control are horrible ways to do relationships. I will I will scold you if you get out of line. I will not forgive you if you hurt me. I remember uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day in my house is a disaster. <laughs> oh my goodness, Mother's Day. So <laughs> I remember, you know, actually the, the window over here, um, at, for the longest time it was broken. That happened on Mother's Day. Um, every Mother's Day, everyone would forget, or we would end up in a big fight, or just everything that could bad, everything bad that could happen always happened on Mother's Day. And I remember, you know, every Mother's Day would end the same way. Mommy's crying in her room. And I'm like, why can't one day just be about me? Yeah, poor me. And my husband's pushing our children into the room going, go say sorry to your mother. And they're coming in like this. And they're saying, we're sorry. But they don't mean it because they just want to go play their games. They just want to get this over with, right? So they're walking in. And I'm like, right? Like, it's just, it was just horrible. And so I remember a couple of years ago, I decided to write down before Mother's Day because I noticed my kids were having anxiety. The week of Mother's Day, they were walking around with anxiety. And I'm, again, 
what's going on underneath and I'm watching them and I'm asking them probing questions that aren't too, you know, too, uh, you know, like investigative, if that's a word. And, and I remember, you know, coming to the conclusion that they are actually anxious about Mother's Day. I have done this to my children because I created shame in their hearts and they were scared spitless of messing it up yet again. And so that Mother's Day, I wrote down everywhere, your children owe you nothing. And we have had a great Mother's Day as I have let go of my expectations and have allowed myself to forgive myself for what I have done because I'm not proud of that. And I've forgiven them. And forgiveness is a process and you have to be okay with you let it go today, tomorrow, it might try to come and sneak back, but you just forgive again, let it go again, get that soluble paper. Uh, we should start selling that soluble paper. <laughs> hey, you guys have given me a business idea. No, like uh, in all serious though, do whatever it takes to allow the garden of your heart to be well cultivated. And so that's your homework today. Some of you have already done your homework, which is great. Now I need you to post it on the wall. Oh, I love that, Kristen. You started your own tradition of self-care on Mother's Day. That's beautiful. And again, if you haven't watched yesterday's um, about self-care, um, Amanda talked about the difference between self-care and self-indulgence. That just hit me like a ton of bricks because my self-care involves ice cream. <laughs> so that was really powerful. That was a powerful thought. Not saying, Kristen, that you shouldn't have ice cream on Mother's Day. That is an absolute must. So, yeah, and Tina, remember that expectations, they lead to disappointment every time. If you want to be disappointed, you can find it all day long. If you want to find crevices and, and loopholes in your family and in your spouse and in your kids, the things that they're not doing, oh, you will find it every day. But what if, what if we put grace in its place, as Sally said? What if we did that? You can't do that without a well-cultivated heart. All the intentions of the world do not ever replace the inner work that releases whatever we actually want to do. It's that messy middle. So today, the homework, the homework is to write down what you are forgiving yourself for. And I want you to write it on the wall because remember, we're having a, a contest. <laughs> we're giving prizes. <laughs> Talk about here. If you, <laughs> we, this kind of goes a little bit against what we believe. You know, we don't believe it. We believe in intrinsic motivation, but, um, but this is also so that we have a way to gauge who is engaging. So um, write down, what am I forgiving myself for? And you know what the beautiful thing is? We have 19 people on this call, but we have 100 people in our challenge. Many of them watch the video later after work and you writing down what you are forgiving yourself for could be the number one thing that somebody else needs. Again, it's that tribe effect. It's that community. It's that, it's that contagion of, wow, she is being so courageous with her life. I want to be like that too. And so when you post, it's, it, it's a release for you. Again, when you make sense of your story, you're creating emotional regulation. When you name your pain, you're actually creating a, 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 a balanced brain. You're, you're taking the left side of your brain and the right side of your brain, and you're actually bringing them into integration. When you write down, when you bring out of chaos all your thoughts and name it, it's powerful. And then when you do that in community, it's like it seals it. How powerful is that? So you're doing so much more than entering a contest. You're inspiring others. You're creating bravery in others. And you're, and you're rewiring your own brain, making sense of your own story. And you're putting the stake in the ground and putting the seal on it saying, as for me and my house, this is the way we roll. We're going this way. We're rewriting a new story. We're not gonna walk in the way we did before. We're moving forward and it might be an absolute mess, but I'm dreaming from the dirt and I'm building up because guess what? If you're in the dirt, there's only one way to go. It's either more rooted or you're gonna grow. Both you win, both you win. 
rooted or growth. And when you're rooted, don't ever despise the roots that go down when the depths of despair have hit your home. Don't ever despair about that because roots need to be built down deep, going further down into the ground so that it can soak up the soil and the nutrients of the land in order for you to grow. So don't just, don't despise the fact that sister so-and-so is growing and you're not because you're rooted. And when you're rooted and grounded in love, you can do no wrong. And your children will grow. They will have a future and a hope. There's no way that you can go wrong. So you're doing better than you think, in other words, my friends. Doing much better than you think. Um, I want to share with you a little bit about our prizes. Because, again, they're, they're prizes that are going to affect you. They're prizes that will add to you. And one of the things that I did... Um, when, when, I, when I went through our crisis, I, I just, I can't help but want to be a reformer. It's just in me. And I was watching what we were going through and I watched the barriers to getting help. And it made me angry. It made me angry that people are waiting for help. It made me angry that there are, that, that, that you have to go through loophole after loophole and then you get passed on to somebody else. And just when your kid trusts somebody, in comes somebody else because people are burned out or they're quitting or you have to be referred here and there. And honestly, an anxious child, a depressed child, a child with opposition or ADHD, you take them from appointment to appointment, you take them from person to person, we wonder why they don't trust adults. It's a real barrier. It's a real systemic problem with mental health. And so I thought that has got to change. That's the number one thing I was going after. Number two, I realized when I got home, after the hospital, after counseling, I'm like, there's no one here. There's no one here except for me, me and God. <laughs> that's, like, that's it. And, and, and that's good. But I needed help. I needed practical help. I needed Kristen. I needed Kristen to sit there with me and help me figure out this. Uh, someone to process with. Because I'll tell you, my friends, they weren't doing it for me. And there was, a, there was a season that I resented my friends. I'm like, where are my friends? Where are my friends? They have all abandoned me. And then you have these silly posts that, yeah, when you, when you have tragedy, you sure find out who your friends are. Well, that's a load of bull, my friends. That is a load of bull. Is it true? Okay, there's truth to it. But what I mean by that is I was expecting my friends to understand something they have never walked in. They never walked in this. They wanted to understand. Yeah, there, there's a, I, I run a conference, a, a, a National Hope Conference, every Bell Let's Talk Day. And this is what happened last year. We have a, a conversation where everyone gets to speak. And at, last year we did it in Calgary, Vancouver, and Edmonton. And in all three, three cities, the number one thing that came out from our conversations around mental health was this. We want to know how to support people. We don't know how. Every single city was saying the same thing. And we do that through a, a process called the incubator. You're sitting with eight people. You write down, everyone gets a chance to speak and share their thoughts on mental health. And then we write down what's common. Out of 2,000 people, the same thing is being said. I want to know how to support my friend, but I don't know how to. This is our problem. And so, then when we go through things, we realize that we don't have a village. We don't have a support system. And our friends are literally clueless. And I had to let my friends off the hook. I had to realize that these, when, I, when, when things go wrong in my house, they can, they can have their, their way of supporting. But the real support that I need has to look different. It has to be so much more than expecting my friend to text me. And so I thought, okay, I, I need a... I need, I need a uh, accessible counseling. I need somebody to help me out and figure out what's going on here. And I need a village. I need those three things. And I thought if I have those three things, there's no way I could go wrong. There's no way I could, I could fail at this because I am completely surrounded. And that's why I created the Brave Parent Institute. I thought it's going to have a counselor. It's going to have coaches and it's going to have the most amazing supportive community so that no parent is left behind. Didn't I post that this morning in our, in our private brave parent group friends? Didn't I? All you brave parents. I said that no parent left behind. That is the vision. If you're alone, 
If you don't know how to, you're like, I've loved this challenge. This challenge has been so amazing. This challenge has, has, has been life-giving. Well, could you imagine if this just continues? After this, you're not left alone again. Sure, you could just go away with all these things we've taught you, right? You could, you could go practice them on your own. Go for it. And if that's you, great. But you know what? Some of you really need what we have. And it was created with you in mind. It was created to serve you, to serve you, to come alongside and to say, I will be your bottom hands. When you're falling, boom, I've got you. That's what we're here for. No parent left behind. And so we're giving away. I want to show you. So some of you might have been here yesterday. Some of you might not have. But I want to show you what we're giving away. Um, no, we are not giving away Connie and Tony Robbins. <laughs> That's funny. Where is my, you know what, guys? This is not my, this is, no. Nope. Yes, here we are. Okay. This is what we're giving away. So we're giving away one massive grand prize. And then there's other little prizes too. My 10 week online boundaries course, 18 keys to connection online course, my book and the online course that goes with my book. The monthly membership that goes with our brave parents is worth 900 a year. You're going to have access to our private Facebook group. You're going to get the weekly group coaching. You're going to get once a month personal coaching and five counseling sessions that are worth $14,000. Holy, who wants this? Who is like, yes, I need that. I, I really, really, I need that. Please, please pick me. Uh, and remember how we're doing this is every time you've posted for your homework, where I'm putting your name in a draw and we're going to draw that tomorrow. Now, some of you might be like, man, like, well, I want that, but I might not get drawn. Well, here's the thing. We have made this accessible to people. Now, $14,000 is what this is worth, but we're only charging $2,100 for the entire year. Now, hang on. You're like, whoa, that's still a lot of money. Are you kidding me? I thought you said this was going to be accessible, right? It's $175 a month. Do you know how much counseling sessions are? They're $175 a session. We've decided to make everything accessible for $175. What you would pay for one hour, you're not only getting all of those courses, again, going back, all of those courses, the membership, the private access to the Facebook group, which gives you 24 seven support, our coaches. You post something, we're there. You post something, the village is there. You get weekly group coaching. And let me tell you, brave parents, those of you who are even in the brave parents right now, something you need to know, is that this year, as of next Thursday, we have an entire year roadmap that we've mapped out for you. We've put intention into a journey that we're bringing you on. And we're taking you through an entire year of, of intentional activity that is going to either root you or grow you wherever you are in your process. And it's 100% based on where you are at. And so you're going to, that's, that's what that includes. It includes um, uh, weekly and even sometimes daily workouts from Amanda. So some of you are like, oh my goodness, like I don't, whoops, there we are. Whoops, whoops, ah, what's going on? $175 is a lot of money. For some of you, this is a lot of money. Now this would be for somebody who's like, I want five counseling sessions. And, and what we do with the five counseling, so you see Shelly, but then you see a coach. This includes a monthly coaching session. So you go see Shelly, she gives you all kinds of stuff, and then the coach walks you through it. Okay, that's how this works. Now, let's say you're like, I don't know if I can afford $175 a month. Well, what we have is we have, you can just do the basic membership. You can just get the, the Facebook group and the weekly coaching sessions for 50 a month. Ta-da! Easy peasy. So we're trying to make it accessible for everyone. Now, some people are like, oh, guys, like I, I do not agree with paying for help. Here's the thing. Right now, our, our system, our, our, our healthcare system, is it broken? Yes. Are they doing their best? Yes. It's, it's, we live in a really weird world where to get free help means that there's waiting lists. 
okay? One of the things that I committed to when our son, when I knew that there was something going on, there was something wrong, we paid $5,000 for an assessment, but we did it because I knew my son needed help and I was willing. Was it a sacrifice? A hundred percent. Was it needed? Yes. And I am, I never regret spending that money. Um, that's a lot of money, but I don't regret it because we needed the help. And sometimes, sometimes we have to be willing to make the investment in our kids. And I, I gave up Starbucks during that time. I gave up um, a lot of things, a lot of natural things that go into movies. I gave it up, but I, I'm so glad I did because I think the mental health of my kids and the, and, and the hope for my family is more important than all the little minuscule things I buy every single day. Now for you, what you would have to decide, whether you wanted to just kind of have access to the monthly membership, the basic membership, which is still pretty amazing. Because Emily, you heard from her yesterday. She does the basic membership right now. Um, probably because that's all we've offered up till now. But she, that's what she's done. And look at her results. Look at where she is. Look at the hope she has. How powerful. It's been beautiful for me. Because when I launched this, I didn't know if it would work. All I knew is that this is what I would have needed. And it's been beautiful to see all these people. Who's in our, who's in our group? Who's in our group? And this has helped you. Tina? Yes. You. Kristen? Yes. You. Absolutely. Yes. Callie. Callie is in our group. And it's helping. It's worth it. And so it's just something to think about. Because tomorrow when I make the draw, you know, like it, there's only a couple. And, and one of you is going to win that massive big prize. But I don't want anyone to go away thinking that there's, there's nothing for you. Now, here's the thing. Tonight is our weekly group coaching meeting with the Brave Parent Institute. We do it on Zoom. And tonight, you are welcome to join us. You are welcome. We're going to have a little meet and greet. It's free. Like, this doesn't cost a thing. Again, it's a part of the challenge. Come ask questions, meet Kristen, meet Sally, get a chance to talk to them, get a chance to talk to Shelly and Amanda and Fiona who will be here tomorrow. You're really going to get a chance to meet all the people who are in the, in the Brave Parent Institute. It's going to be a great time. And so I'm going to be posting that free invite and, you know, just come, just come, see what you think. See how it feels to feel surrounded. See what this does, because this is so dear to my heart for you. Because what we're doing is we want to raise up parents who can say, I am brave. I show up when it's hard. I love without walls. I forgive when it hurts. And all we want at the end of the day is for you to rise through the storm. So guys, tonight, um, if you want to join us, I'll post it. But thank you for coming today. I am so excited. I am so thrilled. I'm, I'm so, I just want to show you this one more time. This lovely jug. I'm still here. Can you hear my voice? Take one last look at this. Look at that. Look at what you let go today. Your homework is to post it on the wall and maybe even post how it felt to let it go. That would really encourage others too. Have a great day, everyone. Maybe we'll see you tonight. And if not, we'll see you tomorrow morning. First thing, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Have a great day, everyone.